for SNL. Three, two, one. Welcome to Saturday night. But we can say. Welcome to Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to Thursday. Thursday. That's, That's this it. This podcast is your official welcome to a Thursday. Every Unless Thursday. you're listening on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, it's always you're welcome to a Thursday. If you're choosing to watch Bookmark, then it's Thursday, no matter what day mm-hmm. it is. That's yeah. just how it is. Welcome to Thursday night. It's bookmarked. Yeah. Oh my gosh, is imagine it? if we had a live show. I don't think I would ever be able to do like, a live <laughs> show. I don't think so. I'd just be sitting here like this the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I would be like, literally get stage fright and not know what to say. I, exactly. The thought of that is actually terrifying. I don't think I could ever do a live show. Shout out to any podcaster that does. I think that some of the strongest people in our society are the people that love to do math. Mm-hmm. It's my brother. He works in like coding. I'm like, okay. I think he had, was it a minor in that? I don't know. His brain is, we don't have to get into my brother again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's just not talk about our personal life. Next. Okay. Let's do, what's your dote today? You got anything good um, for us? Anything fun? I have graduated onto my full size <gasps> cherry slushes again because I'm out of the mini Alani's. And do you want to know something that's weird? In the mini Alani's, the liquid is clear, but in these, the liquid is red. Hmm. And you may ask, Destiny, how did you notice that? (laughs) That's so funny that you asked. I managed to spill literally everything that I have. And one day I spilled it on me and I was like, oh, wow, it didn't make a mark because it was clear. And then the next day I spilled it all over me and it was red. Oh, no. Have you still bought them in bulk? Like, are you still doing a a bulk order of? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Still doing a bulk order. Still drinking these. My target had all cherry. Yeah, Mine was I've stocked. noticed they now are really keeping up stock of the cherry slushes wherever I go. Hmm. I and wonder who's I, the highest demand of it. <laughs> no, that's what I'm like. The world definitely does not revolve around me, but sometimes you just gotta think. You're like, I wonder if Alani was like, hey, let's push these cherry slushes out there. But that's not true at all. <laughs> I'm like a little tiny fish in the pond. doesn't matter. What's your dough? I got my Olipop lemon oh, lime. Yeah. I have one mm-hmm. left after this. Got Ugh, that's always the worst when you know you have only one left yeah so i need to buy another another pack i have to order one why is it so hard for me to crack open again it's okay it's hard for I'm me weak. to crack open again too i feel like i'm gonna break a nail and i don't want to do that and it's oh, not worth delicious. all that no i get my nails done so don't want to break them oh my gosh i need to get my nails done but i'm just every single time that i need to go get my nails done I have this internal battle with myself where I'm like, I should just pop all of them off and stop getting my nails done. But oh then my I'm God. get my nails done and I'm yeah. like, I couldn't imagine not having them done. Yeah, I think about that every time. It's because going to get your nails done is the worst, but having them done is the best. And I still have the, the ghost and the bat and like we're past Halloween now, so I need to get this off my nails. I'm only, I've only lost one. <laughs> okay. These That's are good. holding on. I like really need to, I really need to go get them done, but I have like the shakes really bad and it's really bad primarily in my hands so when i go get my nails done they're always like i feel like i'm a nightmare because yeah, they're you're like, moving can't, they can't get one they're like stop moving i'm like i wish i could <laughs> <laughs> you're like i actually I can't wish. help this nope yeah. i actually can't help it i don't know and also i am embarrassed because i talked about this in the vlog when i got these nails done like a month ago because i got them done right before i went to jersey last month mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to get your nails done like every what two to three weeks and i get uh, yeah done, i think like, around maybe that once a month <laughs> yeah, <this is> bad. <laughs> anyway i do need to get them done but I was in the nail salon and I was listening to an episode of the Broski Report and I ended up reposting the clip on TikTok because I thought it was so important for everybody to understand like what the clip was. But it was in one of the podcast episodes and she starts like, ran- like you know, if you listen to the Broski Report, start to talk about another freaking <laughs> podcast. I know. But Brittany, it's Brittany Broski's podcast, whatever. And she will just be like talking like this and just start screaming something. I like, love randomly. it. It's so funny. <laughs> yes. It is so funny. And so I thought it was so funny that it was like a clip. And if you go on my repost on TikTok, you'll be able to find it because it's the one where she's like, I get girl boss without my coffee. Mm -hmm. And she starts like screaming into the microphone. And I started busting out laughing to the point where tears were rolling down my (laughs) face because I just thought it was so funny. And I kid you not, like the whole entire like line of people getting their nails done next to me, every single one of them shoot their head up to just stare at me and they're they like i want to know it was so funny they want to in on the, the joke the nice girl doing my nails was so confused and i was like <laughs> i just want to leave right now oh like, 
<laughs> you had a giggle. I, it wasn't even a, it was literally a full on <laughs> jolted my body. Mm-hmm. I am laughing so hard. It was a whole entire thing. And so have you ever I watched like, her podcast video form? Yeah. Like her videos. I, when I she does to. When she does the screams, she has to like turn away from the mic and scream because she screams so loud. loud. But it sounds like she's still in the mic because yeah, she, she screams so loud. Screaming into the void. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like, that's me though. Like whenever I feel like I do something that's very, but I always turn my face to the side because I'm just like, no one can see me have this strong of an emotion. You guys can't do it. I can't. I can't yeah. have this in front of you guys. I love when she does that. And it's just her alone in that, that studio room. We could talk about I'm ourselves like, now if you want. I'm hyper aware of everything that I'm doing today. So that's like not a good sign. Anyway. Let's anyway, I on. love. Has anything been going on? Yeah, I actually have a story to tell you. But first, can I tell you how much I love your hair like that? She has two little braids on her shoulders and it's so cute. Oh, God. I literally have been having a crisis with myself all day because I hate it. So thank oh, you. I love it. And I was just watching your vlog and you had it with your little brown sweater. You look so cute. I love your when you're braided hair. Do you have thick hair? So like in the braid, it looks cute. Oh, see, I I don't know why I've been doing this lately. I think it's just like a lazy hairstyle that I'm like, I don't want to look at my hair right now. So I'm just putting mm-hmm. it in braids. One of those hairstyles that, that would be in like the tutorials in like 2015 on YouTube. Oh you know, when they're like God, easy no. hairstyles for, cl- for school. <laughs> because I would eat those up too. <laughs> Me too. If it was a new school year, I couldn't wait for like Alicia Marie, Aspen Ovard, mm-hmm. Bethany Moda to post. Like I needed to know what the vibe for that school year yeah. was. Like what, what they said went. So I was like, I okay. used to be and too embarrassed to like do those hairstyles though, but I would love watching it. See, I should, I probably honestly would have done a little bit better in my life if I would have been embarrassed when I was younger because... <laughs> Um, it's something that I appreciate a trait as I've grown older that I, uh, have, you know, formed embarrassment because I feel like I did a lot of things when I was younger that just, it's like, you know, be aware of yourself a little bit, at least like I would, um, <laughs> oh my God, I'm just like when the hunger games was real, oh my, I saw a TikTok the other day and this girl was like, she's not watching the hunger games. She is. And it was a picture of her in her backyard with the Katniss Everdeen braid in her hair. <laughs> I kid you not. If I went on my mom's Facebook right now, I would be able to pull up a picture that I used to braid my hair from right here and like braid Katniss? it down by myself. Yeah. Cause my mom couldn't braid. So uh-huh. I figured out how to do the Katniss braid and I asked for a bow and arrow for Christmas one year and I got it and I would, <laughs> and I would go out in my backyard and I would get targets and I would <laughs> shoot my bow and arrow. I'm like trying to picture you do this just like on a Tuesday. I have a picture. No, it was an everyday activity because I would braid my hair to go to school. Aww. And I would be like, I'm telling you, I think since I've been a child, I have just really bonded with like fictional stories in a way where I've turned them into somewhat of a reality You're dedicated. in an unhealthy yeah. way. I've always been like this, babe. Like it's always mm-hmm. been unhealthy. That and the whole entire like <laughs> Bethany Moda, like when they'd be like five easy hairstyles, you bet you better believe. You better believe it that I was doing it. Like I yeah. Li- yeah. And I was doing it all in my hair. My mom didn't know how to braid, so I would learn how to do all the hairstyles and do it on myself. Yeah. I I learned to French braid my hair too because when I found out about French braiding I said that looks really cool. But I never learned how to do the um it's a Dutch braiding the opposite of the French braid. Like where yes, it's like and that's pops what out I a little. Do. I don't know how to I do, do that. I love the way that one looks and I can't figure I, it out. I hate that the I was talking about braids. <laughs> I hate that the way that French braiding like looks like it's inside of your head and I like the mm-hmm. way that Dutch braids look like they're sitting on top of your that's head. What that I, that's what sense. I like more. But I can't yeah. my brain can't figure out to go like under, not over, over, not under. I don't know which See, one it is. I don't know if I could French braid anymore, but I know I can Dutch braid. Like yeah. I that's like what I do. Like I don't so think I can French braid. Let's pass the skills over to each other. <laughs> you don't tell me. I feel like it's like a rite of passage as a young girl to somewhat get obsessed with braids. Oh, yeah. I used to way. practice in my mirror. My arms used to hurt. Like, I would have to, like, figure out how to do it. See, how I taught myself, I had these big brat's head dolls. That oh, was yeah. just the head. And they had long hair. And I would just sit on my floor and I would figure out how to braid. And then I, once I had that down pat, I would just do it all myself. Yeah. It took me a bit to figure it out myself. Anyway, next time you're here, we'll trade braiding secrets. <laughs> like, we'll, just, we'll just sit there and braid each other's hair. <laughs> Aw, it's such a wholesome oh, activity. Anyway, um, what's your story anyway. to tell me? I'm on the edge of my seat quite literally. No. <laughs> I've been waiting to tell you this because I've been on edge since it happened. And it was like oh, last God. time we record. It was the day I went to New York. I think it was like the day after we recorded last week. 
So I'm going to the, the post office to my P.O. box because I was picking up a package that I knew I had in there. And I do this frequently. I go like once a week to the post office, whatever. But I'm always on edge anywhere I am. Like, I th- it's just because of men. Like, men scare me. And I say that not even lightly. Like, I'll see a man and I'll just be very on edge and scared. So anywhere I go by myself, I'm always looking around what's going on. But I walk into the post office and I'm like holding the door open for like a man or whatever. And I go in. And where my P.O. boxes are, you kind of have to like go around the corner. And it's just like lockers. And yeah. there's like no one back there. So it's like really creepy anyway. So I go to my P.O. box and I take out my package and I like stand there and I open it up. I see what's inside. I'm like so excited. And then I leave. And then as I'm like walking out, I'm holding the door open again for like a few more people. And then I walk to my car in the parking lot. Like I walk past like the first row of cars and like I'm in the back. So I'm walking towards my car and this guy stops me. He's like, excuse me. So I'm like, not, not by him. Like I walked past him already. So I turn around and I'm like, Yeah. And he's standing next to his car and he's like standing next to like the back passenger door. Like that door is open, but like the front, like his door is not open, but the back passenger one's open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's standing next to that one. He's like, um, the way he looked at me, like, I'm like getting so on edge again. I hate this, but he looked at me and the way he like looked in my eye, like my stomach like dropped, like my heart dropped. And he like had this like weird not almost like grit on his face and he wasn't like old he wasn't young but he like looked at me and he was like can you help me deliver a package like i don't know how to and he didn't have a package in his hand he was just standing there and then he starts walking towards me so i i like standing there with my package and i'm like um they can help you deliver inside like it's a post office i was like they can help you inside and i turn around and i like run to my car like he watched me run to my car and i run inside i close the door and i lock it (laughs) so i'm watching him from the outside like the the side mirror and he's like stopped in his path because he was coming towards me so that's why i like ran because i was like scared i'm like i don't i don't know like don't come near me he doesn't have a package in his hand like what are you delivering so i like watch him through my side mirror and he goes into his back passenger seat the seat that was open and he's like doing something in there and then he comes out he closes the door and then he walks into the post office with nothing in his hand no package so i call chris like shaking freaking out because i'm like did this guy did he want me to come say yeah i'll help you deliver like go to the back seat and like throw me in like was he gonna take me like literally the first thing in my head and I told Chris, and he's like, and he's a boy, so he doesn't really understand the fear that I have. But I can't get that man's face out of my head. Like, I literally, like, I thought, like, that was the time I was going to get kidnapped. And I've been on edge ever since. I can't go anywhere alone. I've been freaking out. And I'm scared of seeing anyone. Like, I literally thought that he was going to take me in that back seat. Like, why is your backseat open? That is weird, especially because, as you said, like, he kind of is rummaging around his car and then goes into the post office with nothing right? in his hand. And why are you asking the, me, out of all the men and the guys that held yeah. the door open, who to deliver the package to, why are you asking me? It is suspicious Ugh. that he did ask you and that he is in the parking lot of a post office where if anybody were to help you, it would be the employees inside. The workers. All of those saying. things just point directly to something like right? suspicious. suspicious Nothing like, adds up. That's why when I looked at that guy, like I was like, I left and I was like, I think if I went to that back seat and I, like told him, yeah, I'll help you with the package. Like, I don't think there was a package. I truly don't no. think there was. No. Oh. And you have to think you were still in the parking lot. So I almost wonder too, like, did he just for appearances, like walk into the post office? Because you have to think yeah. people who do things like that are so calculated with the moves that they make because they've either done it before or they have planned out stuff to know what can kind of make them look a little bit more innocent in the situation but that's crazy and i would I have too went down a spiral and been I like know. yeah i'm not going thank anywhere. god I said, and now i make my mom go to my thing for me because she goes to the post office all the time i tell her to go to my, my p.o box i'll never go over there again like i i just can't show my face there i'm too scared no i've been on edge ever since like i just anywhere i've been going like i went to barnes the other day oh i've just been so on edge because it well, freaked me out You think Barnes is a safe space, but I have had like a few interactions inside of Barnes where I've been like, oh, this is like the worst. It feels like they know. They know where the girlies are going nowadays, so they're going there too. That's why I hate that I have to like focus on my surroundings and stuff so hard, but like you really have to. I bought pepper spray. I think it's coming soon. Oh, God. I have I, I need to be like strapped with something. I'm too scared. Next time that man comes up to me, he's getting sprayed. Anytime somebody mentions pepper spray, it's just a soft subject for me. A what? It's a like touchy subject for me. Wait, why? Is that? Oh, <laughs> just kidding. I already know what you're when saying. I got suspended from school. Yeah, that, that is, it's mm. like an every day gets worse around here. That it's crazy because you hear stories. You do. And I that's all I think about. I was at the gas station the other day by myself and I was like, ooh, 
This is Ugh. this is feeling a little scary. And it's always when I think of you or anyone at a gas station by themselves. It starts freaking me out. That was me the other day. I was um getting I was I went to Circle K gas station and I parked to pump my gas and then I went inside of the store to get a coffee and um just some I was like oh god there's like it was early in the morning so like a lot of people were like out going to work and like getting gas but I was like oh I feel so unsafe right now and I was like I really want coffee though like I really yeah. need a coffee did you get so it so I'm gonna go in here yeah <laughs> oh good all right um found this out the other day don't know if it's true was not confirmed by Miss Jessa Hastings but oh yeah Magnolia Parks apparently was picked up by A24 to make a show. A24? Just hasn't yeah. posted anything, but I saw it's like confirmed. I don't know if it's on the website or something, but it's like, yeah, basically. But I don't know why she hasn't like announced. Maybe it's not finalized. I don't know. But it's like on news things. A24, I will say for a live action show like that, I think that they can execute it very well. I do think that A24 has some very beautiful cinematic. I feel like um, the directors and producers with A24 um, produce great, great material. So I feel like yeah. if well, that the, is true, it's in really good hands. Yeah, that's what. I, yeah, when I saw it, I was first very sad, and I was like, I don't need my favorite series to be on TV and possibly ruined because we all know like sometimes it doesn't portray the right way so i was like you know what if it becomes a show maybe i just won't watch it i'll just keep the books and what yeah. I, I think of it in my mind but when i saw that they were doing it they did normal people and they did that book justice like so good so well yes. so i also trust jessa i feel like she loves the books so much obviously they're like her books but like you can tell how much she cares about them so i don't think she would do anything in the wrong way i know it's not my book but like i don't know I think it'll be fine if they're doing it because they've done other things. Amazing. I get what you mean. And like you, they produce normal people, A24. Yeah, they did normal people. And then I just got an ad that they're, I don't know what they're doing, but the actors they have for it is um, Zac Efron and the guy from Shameless. Yes. I don't know what, what show or what movie is going on. It's about the wrestler on. family. Oh, okay. It's like they were wrestlers or something. I don't know. I saw it. But I think that A24 brings almost a um, Wes Anderson feel to a lot of their things. And I feel like those people that are behind A24 are very creative and they know how to make a high quality movie or show. So I definitely think that the quality of the show and the budgets mm -hmm. that they have would be to have some good actors I feel like they would be able to have the budget to portray the world that they live in. The only yeah. thing that's scary is that when you write a book and that book is essentially described as Gossip Girl vibes, like Gossip Girl's already been a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like it when this book kind of emulates Gossip Girl energy, does, is it going to kind of feel, you know, like it's a completely different yeah. story, but is it going to kind of feel that same way where it almost I feels feel, too like yeah. similar? I feel like I they know. can make it a little bit different because Gossip yeah. Girl it was also filmed so long ago. So like a modern day London rich feel would probably feel different. I mean, you're still getting like high class, high status people, but what I love about the books is like their inner monologue is so good. Like it's so personal and so like their personality. So like you can't really get that yeah. in a show. Well, I don't know. Maybe they could do like a flea bag type of situation. I don't know if you've ever seen that show, but I'm pretty sure it's that where like there's a lot of not like I don't I wouldn't want them to break the fourth wall, but it's kind of like have you ever watched you? Yeah, when it's like a voiceover kind of. Yeah, when he kind of, it shows like a thought and they kind of do a voiceover of yeah. like his inner monologues. I feel like in the books, he may have a lot of inner monologue like in the books. So I feel like that's a way that you could go about that yeah. when I do agree with you that the inner monologue in Magnolia Parks is so important because I feel like one, it gives a lot of info that you don't necessarily see within their conversations. Yeah. Because they're very much, let's not communicate, let's yeah. get at it's each other. Like they don't actually head. talk like, about what's going on. Yeah. yeah. It's all in their head. Like it's like this person does something and then you're reading what's going on inside of their inner thoughts and not mm -hmm. what they're saying to the other person. So I definitely feel like Right. They would have to do a type of situation like that because you do have to show the inner monologue of the characters or else it doesn't know. work. And like her beautiful quotes that she has is what makes her books and her stories like so good. Like those quotes are just like if they didn't have cut me and I'll bleed him in the show, what would you do? Like put it somewhere in the show. I don't I don't know. But see, that's inner monologue. So that would have to be I'm telling you inner monologue would have to play a part I hope in the so. show. Because that's my favorite part of the books is like the quotes and the things that 
like Magnolia yeah. and Beach, I think about each other, or even like Julian eventually thinks about, you know, like it just exactly there's physical reactions. I can't bring out Julian. I'm actually <laughs> obsessed with him. I can't. <laughs> Don't worry, get three more books of him. Oh, thank God. I hope he gets known. <laughs> I hope what? he just gets a little book. I would want to read all about Listen. it. I don't know. But I. how do you feel about the fourth book honestly coming out? It's going to be here before you know it. I mean, the third book. Sorry, third book. It's actually terrifying me. I'm really nervous because I know once I get it, I'm going to want to binge it. But it's the last one in Magnolia and BJ's like, point of view. So I don't think I'm going to. Because with the other ones, like they were already out. Like I didn't like pick them up as they were coming out so like i knew more were coming but this is like the last one so i think i need to savor it as much as i want to binge it in a day i think i have to like go slow because the last one and then you what have am more I self-control do? than me i know I, I feel like that's not gonna happen but like i want myself to not binge it i don't know maybe i'll binge it but then go back in and annotate it i don't know but I'm really I can nervous. imagine you doing that. I could imagine. I literally, when you started saying that, I was like, no, I imagine you binging it and then you turning literally right back around yeah. and rereading it to Do annotate a second it. Read. Yeah. Like that seems more realistic, but I'm just nervous of how she's going to end it because she, she always says how she would create like a realistic ending, not like a happily ever after or whatever. Like not, she's not like that for at least these books. It just comes naturally like their relationship, how she's writing it. So I'm just nervous how she's gonna end it because i don't know especially since she's not traditional in the sense of basically what you said of like let's write happy ending or let's write perfect characters where honestly every single one of the characters has big major character flaws to them Mm -hmm. but then again and i am one of those people that but i always say this that when i first read the first magnolia parks books a year and a half ago i think i read them in like the fall time of 2020 two we're in 2023 right anyway yeah um i all i knew was that people had started posting about the book i didn't even know anything about it and i just bought it because i was like oh this seems like it's probably going to end up being a hyped up book like let me try to get ahead of the curve here Mm -hmm. and i was just like oh yeah this is not for me because toxic relationship miscommunication everything that you're just kind of like okay this yeah is when they ask you what your least favorite tropes and what's it called are you say everything that's in those books no and that's why and i've gotten a lot of comments that are like how does destiny like these books when it's literally every single thing that she complains about in a book but when you go into that book knowing that these characters are going to be flawed and this is kind of how it is sometimes it's just entertaining to read about mm-hmm. toxic people if it's written in the right way i don't know yeah. what i don't know and it's just like you eat like they're it up not- because it's it's kind of like watching reality tv yeah like they're not like it's not toxic in like a damaging way where it's toxic and there's like a bad person like they're just like they feel like real people like humans make these kinds of mistakes and yes they're not i don't know perfect and like being the perfect little book boyfriend that's why i love them so much they do feel very real and i will say that 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 it's like they feel like real characters who make real mistakes yeah it's not toxic in a way where you're like ooh, they shouldn't be together it's in a way where It's like you're looking at a real relationship where they're just not handling things in the best Mm -hmm. way or in the most mature way because who does like really at the end of the day. Um, But it's all about personal preference where that is stuff that bothers me. And ask Sarah, when I was literally sitting in front of her reading the books, there were countless times where I was looking at her and I was just like, what the, like, Mm -hmm. why, why? Like not even why, I was just like, why? I don't, I don't know why. And what did I tell you when you would ask me the rating every time? I always told you I could never rate one of these books five stars because of how much they miscommunicate in these books. And that really, really makes me mad that that's the thing that holds me back from ever like falling in love with it. However, The Great Undoing, it's like totally different people. So that one's a five stars for me. Yeah. That's that's a magical book. Completely different. It's like, oh my God. I know. (laughs) Yeah. When you were here, because these books, when you're reading them, you have like visceral reactions to them, like physical, like outward reactions to what's going on. And like, you know, what's going to come and what's going to happen. Because like I said, there's never a happily ever after. Like, you don't know how it's going to end, but like, you know, it's never going to be like a good thing happening. So like, you're expecting honestly the worst in them. You have to prepare yourself. That's why with the last book that, or the last Magnolia book that's coming out, I'm nervous because she likes to do it in like a real way. Because like, they feel like real people. So like, they're going to make real. But the way that, at least not the great undoing but like long way home ended into it i was gonna say something that i think is gonna be a theme in that one but now i can't because that's a spoiler to how long way home ended but if you know how long way home long way home ended 
Yes. I think there's a big theme that's going to be happening in the fourth one. Like, I don't think it's going to focus so much on the toxic we've seen in them in the first one. It's like, obviously, that's their personalities are how they are. But I think it'll focus on something else. I don't think it'll be relationship focused. I think it'll be yeah. more personal focused on the effects of media within their life and kind yeah, of agree. what that ends up doing to them as people. And what the outside world kind of sees inside of their life and fam- mm-hmm. family stuff that's happening. stuff. I think that'll be more of what it is because of the buildup of the last two books. It just kind of feels like you can't keep She's pulling She's done the damage. Yeah. yeah. You can't keep pulling them <laughs> because not to, whatever, not to spoil it. It's just there's nothing else to pull a punch with. I you know. know what I mean? Mm-mm. Everything else is like worked through. Yeah. So it's that's like why you- for the next like Daisy books, I'm thinking of how she can do it. Cause she has a few more to write. I don't think she started them yet. Cause I, I listened to a podcast she was in, but I think, <laughs> I think she's going to cause some damage in those. I truly do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hard to say for, um, Julian lovers out there or even Christian Daisy lovers. Like, I'm, I'm so indifferent about Christian. It's not even funny. Me too. Like, I just really don't care Since about the, him that yeah, much. Yeah, me neither. But after the I grand doing, Julian. I'm like not as I was He's before. fine. Like, but I just don't care about him. Like, I mean, yeah. when I think about Magnolia Parks, <laughs> he's like on the low, low list of people that I think about. Like, I don't ever think about him. Me too. I, think I always about think about Julian. Tom more than I do Christian. <laughs> I think about, is it Henry? Henry? Oh, yeah. Yep. I think about him. No. way above christian i think i think about julian than christian not christian sorry henry <laughs> julian than henry never christian i never think about christian yeah. he just kind of has the personality of like wallpaper in a way where it's like there's a little bit there based on the print but there's nothing else to really look at uh, <laughs> that was a crazy comparison <laughs> i do love daisy though daisy is a no top. daisy is a girl boss and yeah I like how she throws in like the mafia sense into the Daisy books, but then it also has her like beautiful quotes thrown in with like mafia and fighting and you know the dark stuff. What? I'm just remembering that I literally DM Jessa Hastings after finishing the Great Undoing. <laughs> she did. So something happens at the end of the Great Undoing, and not really spoiler, honestly, but there's like an animal involved in the Great Undoing. Is that only? It's the- a dog. I- it's a dog there's a dog they have a dog they have a dog in their family yeah so there's no like like the way she ends every book is a pretty big like i guess like plot like you're left on like a plot hole like you don't really know it's a cliffhanger that's what i was looking for (laughs) a cliffhanger (laughs) so there was she doesn't have no actually this was a plot hole this was a plot hole she forgot to write this it wasn't concluded because like she ends i was in such a manic state (laughs) that i had to dm her yeah she asked her if like wh- is the dog okay like where is the dog and she actually answered guys so if you're wondering too dog is dog's okay I really, that's the craziest thing you can dm her after that that kind of ending is the dog <laughs> <laughs> like there's so much that happens at the after, at the end of the great undoing like it's it, dare i say it's worse not worse <laughs> the the detail of what goes on after, at the end of The Great Undoing, I think it's in so much more detail than the end of The Long Way Home because they're the same timeline that it, it's almost more painful, even though the, great, the Long Way Home is like a very bad ending, whatever. But so much goes on at the end of The Great Undoing. But Destiny asks if the dog was okay. I know. And I, oh, I say this. What makes it worse is I texted her like I text Sarah in the way that there were multiple messages so (laughs) get just one big dm it was hey i don't know if you'll see this i really need this question hey i don't know if you'll see this then really need this question answered then is the is the dog okay because you (laughs) forgot to write in that the that the dog you know was Mm -hmm. around and I didn't expect her to reply. I was just really in a moment of desperation. And I could not think about anything else. And then she replied to me and she was like, I usually don't answer any questions that has anything to do with this, but I understand where you're coming from. Yes, the dog's okay. So for anybody else was thinking like that, if you read the end of the, the dog is okay. And this is not a spoiler or anything. Just know that if you read that book and you get to the end, you too are thinking, where the hell's the dog? Because when I tell you, that was my only thought that was my first and only thought when I finished the book. Was, well, you always say when you're reading books and there's like animals or dogs specifically in them, like 
you're like hyper focused on it. You don't want the dogs in the books because of that. Because you know what I do? Even if it's a freaking golden retriever or German Shepherd, it's Charlie. It's Charlie. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine it like, being Charlie. Yeah. And I'm like, where's the, oh, the dread that I feel when I'm reading a book that's a thriller and there's a dog mentioned? The mm-hmm. dread that I feel. I'm yeah. like, this is the worst thing that you guys could do. Especially a thriller because they could take that in a horrible way. <laughs> no, that's what they usually do too. Like, mm-hmm. no. oh my God, no, that would be a spoiler. <laughs> but that happened to me with another super popular book series where it genuinely disturbed me so much. Oh, I know much, what you're talking about. And it was so out of pocket mm-hmm. to do I, that. Yeah, I remember but, filming that and I was like, there's no way. Like, there's I actually like, no way. And it was a golden retriever too. Yeah. The most wholesome, when you think of a wholesome dog, I feel like a golden retriever comes to mind. Yeah. And you're like, that was oh, out okay. of pocket. There was like that no was reason for the plot for that really to happen, to be honest. <laughs> it was like the equivalent of reading that terrible. That's okay. We're talking about terrible a popular, you guys, if you've read the book, what we're talking about, you definitely know what we're talking about. It's a yeah. trilogy. Yeah. But it's, it's the equivalent to the terrible confidence of wildflowers duet. I'm sorry. I don't want to call it terrible, but Jesus Christ. Like, There's a third really. one coming out. <laughs> oh my god isn't there i'm pretty sure i've seen that hopefully not the (laughs) ending of the first book well that was so out of pocket it's not even good writing babe it's like it's not even like a you kind of have this build up of being like ooh, this thing may go on it was just like everything's fine and then bam yeah it's also crazy because it's something that you don't see coming but i also honestly think the author might have thrown that in to the the confidence of wildflowers like the end of that one to like set up for the second one because of everything that I happens. I was literally in the about to say that. I was and like, to I was put like, that was, as a plot, <laughs> just for a second. It was just book a reason crazy. for a second book. It was literally. Ugh. I'm like, you could have done. So- God, that was. I was kind of blindsided too. I thought it was. It wasn't real. Like I thought. It, I thought it was gonna like end up okay. You know what I mean? But it did I not. knew it was real because if I'm not mistaken, I read it in my reading sad books video because everybody was like, "This book is heartbreaking," and I was like, "No, my no, brain this is just like, broken." Yeah yeah not i did not any other that's what that's why like some books like if that plot like how the end of the confidence of wildflowers ended like it's fine but like knowing it's for like a second book or like feeling that it's for the plot to continue i don't like that like, i can't think of any other ones but like i remember that one or just shock value really that's more what it feels like too to yeah. be like ooh, let's get a shocking ending so people want to read the next book that's what it feels like feels like you want to write a second book but you want pe- to make sure that people want to read it so let me write this shocking ending to make sure everybody reads it that's what it feels yeah. like speaking of second book not actually new books so many new books came out oh my gosh november 7th was like the day of new releases for real nope. like seriously and i went to barnes to get the powerless one and then i realized i forgot every other new release that came out <laughs> there were so many <laughs> did all the authors were, get together and were like guys this is the day i don't even th- there was um power because powerless the like just kind of u.s edition i would call yeah, it yeah the u.s came out came out um yeah, Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher, Check and May, Iron Flame, all that stuff came out. I thought Betting on You was coming out. Uh, but I, I thought that too, but 11th. it's not until the end of November. Oh, it's not until also, the end? <laughs> yeah, you want to know what I did? I was filming my TBR video and I had Check and Mate and what was Betting on You next to each other, <laughs> like for the video. And the whole time I'm talking about the both of them, I thought that Check and Mate was written by Lynn Painter too, and I thought she had two books coming out this month. I noticed that in your video. Did you notice it? Did I? I thought I cut some of it out, but like I didn't. The whole you, time I'm at, did you did I like an it? asterisk, and you were like, "Oh yeah, uh, you were like not Lynn Painter." That's the yeah. Other book. So the and whole I time, like, yeah. I edit all of it out, but like the whole time I'm talking about both books, I'm like, "Wow, she has two books coming out this month." That's why I want to put them both next to each other. And I'm editing, and I look up the picture of the cover of Check and Mate, and it says Allie Hazelwood, and I'm like, "Oh my god, I don't know why I thought it was Lynn Painter. I think because it was just YA it was the only thing in my head." And I was like, oh, "Okay," but yeah, anyway. yeah, it comes out the 23rd. Big so. day because it was also like a bunch of big authors that were coming out with a lot of releases. So yeah, now I think the only one I'm looking thing. forward to is. What's left is um Ruthless Vows, December. Yep. yep. Yeah. So that's about gonna, it for this year. I'm gonna read that on my plane to Florida. Yeah. When I was at Barnes yesterday, I so I went as soon as it opened to Barnes because <laughs> I went to Walmart, Meyer, Target, Barnes, and I was walking around. And I had all of my other books in my hand, and then I was like, mm, I don't. They don't have Powerless set out. Like, oh, this is awkward, you know. But I I wasn't leaving without it. So. 
I'm around the table and if you've ever been to a barns where they still have the carts out and they're still trying to like stock stuff if you go like earlier in the day they usually have like a cart with books on it because they're still trying to like put stuff out and I was looking for the Matthew Perry memoir and they didn't have it and then I look at the cart and I see it on the car I see the powerless book barns edition on the cart and I was like (laughs) Like, if my mom was with me, she would have just grabbed it off the cart. Yeah. But my inner thought is, what if they don't have that, like, scanned into the system yet? Yeah. You can't buy it until they scan it or something. I don't know. So, the girl's literally, like, getting love redesigned off the cart because that wasn't out yet either. She hadn't put that out yet on the tables. And so, but I already got it from Target. So, <laughs> I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> and she, like, whatever. And I go, excuse me, are you, do you guys know if you're going to get Powerless by Lauren Roberts today? Lip. <laughs> Girl, I'm looking at the book. Like, she knew what I was doing. She was like, oh, yeah, it's just right here. And she, like, reaches and hands it to me. And I was like, cool, cool. I would never. That's the fastest I've asked an employee for help ever because Mm -hmm. I saw it right there on the car. If I wouldn't have seen it on the car, I wouldn't have asked anybody. And I would just walk out without it. I'm like that, too. I had to ask for Powerless, too, because all the new books were on the tables, like, the new Fourth Wing Edition and everything. And I'm circling all the new tables and everything for the Powerless. I'm going in the fantasy section. It's nowhere to be found. So I had to ask, too. I don't know what it is about asking a, a worker <laughs> like where stuff is but i feel like i can find it like you go into a library you know it's like alphabetical order last name yeah like you can find it but like it's because i've told my mom on multiple occasions i know where it's at like i know where it's yeah. supposed to be at if it's not out on the table i know where it's supposed to be out on the shelf so i don't need to ask them that means that they yeah. don't have it yeah and but then, just to make sure you have yeah to ask no eventually. then my mom always does that she's like no i'll go ask them and i'll be damned if a lot of the times that they're like oh yeah let me go get it and then mm-hmm. it's just somewhere where i didn't see it and then i'm yeah. like Ugh. that's where powerless was it was like on the new release but like the shelves not the tables i was like you guys should put this on a table yeah but off. that was madness yesterday but i can't wait to read a uh, love redesign by lauren asher oh can you tell me when you read it <sighs> that i and powerless you need to tell me so that. my plan is to read right now i'm doing a reading vlog of like um new releases that came out i love redesign check in mate i'm gonna read that anna huang book oh king um, of greed is it yeah or king of wrath king of greed because i read so when the first book came out in that series last year i read it like as soon as it came oh, out you did did you like yeah. it i just bought it <laughs> um i think i gave it a three stars because i feel like i've read i i think i can remember my review was that it was a good book but i've read this story so many times already like okay. with the same like type of but that's just from like a seasoned wattpad mafia reader yeah. read a lot of mod- like it was just like there wasn't too much of a differentiation in the characters or anything for me to feel anything but i thought it was an enjoyable book and so that's in it iron flames in it um yeah all of those books are in it but i'm planning on doing a separate video where i will be reading powerless so for that video. i don't know if i want to read it on the paperback or if i want to i don't want to i don't i feel like i don't want to mark up the barnes exclusive so i think i'll just do it on the paperback that i have yeah i'm excited because i have other copies now so i'm going to go back and annotate a new copy because the original one i had i annotated but i didn't feel like pretty yeah. like you know when you want to go back and tell like, one of your favorite books and like make it pretty yeah like good I annotations like i don't like annotating on hardcover books i don't know why I don't oh really like yeah I feel like I like it because it's like <laughs> I like because it's like when you put it on like on a surface like on a table it can like lay flat. Do you know what I mean? It has like a hard surface yeah. underneath it. I don't know. I just don't think that flipping through annotations because you can't necessarily flip through annotations on a hardback. Yeah, like you can that's true. That's so I true. think that's my grievance with that. All right. Oh, I just finished the right move and I'm gonna start checking me tonight. Oh my gosh, what did you think of the right move? No, I gave it four stars. You said, oh, oh I love <laughs> that book. I think it's so sweet. I liked the way that their relationship and everything progressed yeah. in it. I, I think it was Ryan like, Shea. yeah, compared to like DNFing the first book, like four stars is incredible. Yes, <laughs> that's what, literally, that's what happened to me. I said, this is crazy that I'm loving this series after DNFing yeah. the first book. Yeah, not just, seeing, yeah. Not seeing how Mile High ended, but like seeing that relationship in the right move was crazy because the way that they treated each other, yes. or he treated her. And like, how did we get to this point? Like, I don't want to go back. I'm not that curious. No. But like, how did we get here? Like, I don't it get it. It wasn't enough to make me want to go back and see yeah, how no. we got there. But I think I said that. So I feel like I've said that somewhere in one of my videos that I was like, this is so weird to read about their relationship when this feels like a 180 from what I was just reading in Mile High. Yeah. Like, because yeah, we didn't see like the happily ever after. Yeah. But it was good. <laughs> like, I understand why people yeah. love Ryan Shea now. So yeah oh my gosh he is so sweet i Aww. think he is just he is. a little he's, a, he's just a gentleman yeah 
and he does a, I think my thing is when people do little things for people that it's not yeah. even like spending money on them it's just little things that mean the most in the world I feel yeah. so when it's an access I read about king. that in books I'm like that's just the best oh do you know something else that happened you know BBC radio mm-hmm I started getting tags in this video and I was like, what? Okay, because you know, I made a TikTok to the Olivia Rodrigo cover of Stick Season by Noah Khan. And I thought that people were just tagging me in this because they know that I really liked the cover of it. No, I'm in the video. What? <laughs> Wait, they let used, me see. What? They used a clip of my TikTok and. Shut up. Let me see. I think, hold on. I think it's coming up after one of these. They used a clip. Yeah, there. Now. Destiny, there's no way. <laughs> no, this is the same equivalent to if anybody followed me a few months ago that the Daisy Jones and the Six account posted um, one of my TikToks where I was no essentially way. freaking out and Sam Claflin reposted it. <laughs> Why is this the first time we're hearing of this? Oh my God. No, you guys had to be there. Anyway, about these famous people, um, Harry Styles apparently shaved his head off. I mean, not his head, his hair. Oh, yeah. But I did send Sarah this TikTok because it was like, pour me a shot because he shaved his head. But then I saw another TikTok where it was like the girl that sent in the picture that somebody was like, no, here's the picture non blurry. And it was just like he kind of just had his hair like pulled back. Oh, and like a headband or something that he has. His whole I need a confirmation hair. somewhere before I start spiraling, because I love when he walks around with that little clip holding his little curls back. Like there's just like a lot of attachment to this what's the kind of relationship parasocial is that what it's called parasocial yes yeah when like it's my just over social media yeah I, the attachment i have to just his hair is like real so i need some confirmation from him and i know he'll never do it because he's not like online like that but someone needs to spot him somewhere so that i can confirm <laughs> his hair status <laughs> yeah really even my dad sent me out sent me an instagram post about like a, the news report saying like harry harry styles fans like freaking out over him cutting his hair or shaving his hair off and i was like oh, thanks i'm really upset yeah. about it yeah and yeah we are <laughs> <laughs> so now we need to know the truth in other harry styles news did anybody check up on him after the 1989 release <laughs> um you know i'm sure he's i'm sure he's up to date I, of what's come out i think out. he's completely fine Me i too. personally think that taylor had him listen to the songs or something. Oh. I think he was notified of the songs. I think he was sent the songs in some way before I this album was that. released. I, That's why these like breakup songs with Harry, yeah. other than it being like 10 years ago, all her other ones were ten, like over 10 years ago, whatever, like Red Album coming out. But like those breakups were so bad that like hearing those breakup songs, it's like, okay, we still like dislike this man. But like we yeah. don't hate Harry because they're friends now. Like hearing what he did in 2012, yeah. it's, I'm fine He was also it. 18. Yeah. Like, yeah. Was he was an 18 year old in a boy band. What do we yeah, expect no. from him? <laughs> it's like, does that make his behavior like we can just whatever? No, no but it's, it's not like he was being like toxic and this terrible boyfriend yeah they were doing it, it to each other like a, too like you hear it in the yeah. songs like it's like they did like, a back and forth you know what i mean it was a very probably bj magnolia-ish relationship yeah. where they were Listen. just kind of <laughs> getting back and forth with each other but to kind of talk about that we didn't get to talk about last week about the 1989 taylor's version release that is definitely the re-recording that i was the most excited about because i do think that out of her stolen albums 1989 is my absolute top fave so i was very very excited about mm -hmm. 1989 coming out i know that <laughs> i know that <laughs> well we both listened to it at the same exact time obviously around 12 o'clock and texted about it and yeah. i went in order of the songs i don't think you did because i remember you I telling me not. like listen to the the vaults and i was like i'm getting there yeah. but then you were like no listen and i was like oh my god okay i'll listen i think the first thing that i said to you was listen to style right now because yeah and i, I yeah yeah and I already had, and I already, and I told her like, yeah, it sounds like an AI. That's the only one on the whole album that hasn't grown on me. Like the other ones that I had not issues with, but felt like sounded different. Obviously, because she's older now, but like, yeah, just the music of it kind of sounded different. But that's the one that still hasn't grown on me. I don't know if it's because I'm attached to style or it just truly doesn't sound right in my head. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about it. I, because here's the thing that I will say, because there are some songs that honestly sound very similar in the re-recording, and you're allowed to like take a moment to kind of adjust to the songs especially when some of them sound different you can tell that they've been kind of like scored differently um and everything like that and i played style first 
because I was like, okay, I want to see what this sounds like in a little bit of my delusional brain. And you wanted to hear I Midnight. To the vault tracks, I was like, I wanted to see if there's any yeah. features. And so I play style and immediately I was kind of like, yeah. And then when she starts singing, I was like, oh, this sounds like really off. Like this doesn't even kind of in the same, like doesn't sound like the same song at all. It sounds differently. So I was texting Sarah and I was like, wow, that style in New Romantics were the two for me that went, that were my favorite songs on the album, um, two of my favorite songs. And so when I listened to them and they sounded so different, not that they sounded bad, but it just almost did sound like an AI cover. Like somebody like yeah. took the AI like the audio. TikToks you see. Of like them putting yeah. up an artist on a song kind of sounded like that. And I've gotten used to both of them now. Like I, I, I just, it's kind of like when Speak Now came out and Back to December, Better Than Revenge, Dear John, all of those things that I feel like were lacking the emotion when I listened to those re-recordings. I felt like they were lacking emotion, but then I just kind of got used to it because you're like, yeah. those are the, just how they sound now. That's kind of where I'm at now with the yeah. re-recordings. It takes a while to get used songs. to them too because she's re-recording yeah. songs from so long ago. Plus she's like, I don't know, they're going to be switched up just at least a little bit. They're not going to be the exact same songs we've been listening no. to forever. So the Vault songs, though, it, are the best she's ever done. <laughs> to me, the best ones she's put out yet. I do think that the I do think the 1989 Vault tracks are the best. Because with Speak Now, I feel like I Can See You was like the only one off that album that like got to the top of the charts where I feel like pretty much all of the Vault tracks from 1989 have hit the top of the charts. Like they're and all as they like... Should they're so good i will say people are sleeping on suburban legends i don't see people that is one of my favorite ones if we want one of my favorites do you want to order our favorite vault track i remember listening to is is it over whatever and i remember texting destiny as like she is eating harry up as soon as i heard like the first i think it was like one of the first lines not even when we got to the blue dress in the red snow or whatever i was like wow blue dress this is truly crazy no yeah but yeah let me you have to go look at the songs. Love the vault songs. Okay. So, oh my God. Do you want to go okay. from like bottom to top or top to yeah, bottom? Yeah, we can do like number five, which is least fave, but still love, and then go to okay. the absolute favorite. Okay. Let's just What's do your- it one by one. So let's just go. I okay. say my five. I say okay. my number five. You say your number five. Okay, go. <sighs> <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm trying to listen to it in my head. Do you want to know? I think slut is number five for me. Oh, wow. This is surprising. It's, yeah, you got to be in the vibe for it. I feel like that's okay. why it's at the bottom. But still love slut. Still. Yeah. <laughs> still I love, love all of slut. These. Still <laughs> love it. <laughs> Mine is say don't go. Oh, my God. That actually kind of hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your next one? I think my next one is now that we don't talk. <gasps> Oh, that hurt me. But it, I think it's because that talk, song... Come on, my shit. But it's because that song's so short when you think about it. Like, it's it really, really just, short, like, yeah. two chord and then it's over. So, I, I think wish that it was that's longer. why it's at number four. Okay. No, that's why... Every time I listen to it, I'm like, I wish that it was longer because she really ate it up at the end where she was like, I don't have to pretend... And then it's done. Yeah. Like, she yeah, kind of, like, I drops agree. the mic and is gone. Um, My fourth is Slut. It's the same thing. Like, I love this song, but I have to be in the mood for it, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's not the first one I play. No never it's always the last vault track that i play is why it's at the last one okay what are we at number three yes what's your third i would say now that we don't talk not not say don't go <laughs> say don't go sorry okay i just love the chorus of that song mm-hmm. so much yeah why, have to- why is it so heartbreaking but so upbeat yeah why no i agree the chorus it's fun that's what i mean I like all the these are so, so good They're like so- i still love that one her 1989 era like the sounds of the songs and everything that she was recording during that era are like yeah, very so upbeat good. and poppy so mm-hmm. i feel like that's why i really like it okay my third is now that we don't talk okay so we're the same no nope not yet <laughs> i, I think we have the same top two. two though yeah i don't know which order okay. though so tell me your top either. your top two. um my number two is suburban legends yeah mine too yeah. so we have the same first and second and first is it versus over is it over now yeah with suburban legends why does nobody talk about the line where she was like we were born to be national treasures like yes. thinking about 
that <laughs> lyric every single time because when you really think about it, it every time i think about it cause i'm like no because it's the idea of both of them him being like the biggest male like artist and her being like the biggest female artist of that you know like of that decade and of that time yeah. to be like we were literally born to be national treasures like we were born to be this kind of like angelina jolie brad pitt yeah like all of these different like iconic couples and it's like yeah you were and you were yeah, and I'm going to be annoying now. And if you listen to Suburban Legends and Is It Over Now and think of Magnolia and PJ, like, please do it. it no, really, you're right. Especially Is It Over Now. Something about it being about Harry Styles, but also relating it to Magnolia and PJ does something positive to my brain. <laughs> I love Is It Over Now partly because of just how much she eats him up in that song. Yeah, but it's really like, nothing like it. Yeah, no, there's he needed nothing. It. He needed his ego, like no checked he needed a yeah check. he's a yeah. completely different person now because you know that's oh, what yeah. getting older does to you wow what a, what a concept that's why i love listening to slut and like there's edits on tiktok of love sick but like with harry styles now edits and yeah, it's just so good. i, I love see it. those all the time and it's sweet because i do feel like he is very like you can't judge this man like the the swifties that were like straight up giving him hate and unfollowing him for things that he did when he was 18 years old yeah, Taylor never, it was never the other boyfriends, like, they're friends now. Like, she yeah. and him, it was, yeah. And That's why so, this one never really, it didn't really bother me. She was eating him up. No. I was like, yeah, get him. Do it. <laughs> it's almost therapeutic in a way to be like, you're officially really over it now, I feel, when it's like, she's yeah. just kind of like, this is, because I feel like something that I saw and that it was so true was that people were saying that she couldn't release these vault tracks back then, because when you think about it, Taylor Swift was huge back then. But I feel like One Direction was a little bit bigger and people yeah. were really in love with Harry Styles. So I feel like if she would have released these songs years ago, I feel like she would have gotten so much hate just for sharing her emotions no, from the relationship. I could fact check that because during her like this era, I didn't listen to her music because I was a like a directioner. Like anything yeah. Taylor Swift did at this like point of time in this era, yes. I didn't listen to or follow on because I loved One Direction so much. So I think if she did that, I would be part of that train unfortunately no that's the insight that i needed because i was like mm -hmm. i do feel that if she would have released and these don't even paint him in a bad light it's just like when anybody breaks up one person is going to have a grievance about the other person when they break up you can still absolutely love a person but you're going to be like but there were things that they did that were whatever while we were dating and she's allowed to have an outlet to yeah. kind of talk about how a relationship was very damaging for her yeah um so I was like, it's not even like painting him in a bad light, whatever. But something that has shook me to the core, because we have talked about this before, how people can kind of like guess who Taylor's song's about. She kind of leaves him. Oh my God, I was just about to bring this up. Yeah. <laughs> that people are now bringing to the table little my, secrets my favorite inside of Harry Styles style song. songs that yeah. they think is about her. My favorite Harry Styles song is from the dining table and people are like assuming now from the lyrics that she's put out yes. that there's parallels between them. And it's crazy that unknowingly my favorite Harry Styles song is about Taylor Swift. And I believe them. Do you want to know why, especially with Harry Styles, the album? Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like, and I'm not a Harry Styles person, but I feel like that being his first solo album, maybe even some of the songs were from like songs that oh, he yeah. wrote by himself that he finally was able to put on an album when he had a solo career. So those songs probably don't even have to be songs that he had written during that time, but they were just stuff that he had in the vault, if you will. Yeah. So it totally makes sense, especially on that first album, that some of them would be about her because I feel like that was a very public relationship that he had. And that makes a lot of sense that, it seems like it was hot and heavy on both sides. You know yeah. what I mean? That and I love that these parallels are coming out. Yeah. Because yeah. his songs are harder to decode. Like he, the way he makes music and his lyrics are like more vague and more like, I don't know, more like metaphors and stuff. Like it's not like yeah. how Taylor Swift, like, you know, these are about Harry Styles. Like there's many details in them. His are more vague and like trying to decode some of them are so hard. So now that we know like kind of what some of them are about, I ate it up. I was like, yeah. thank you guys for your detective work. <laughs> isn't it like in From the Dining Table, it's like, woke up with a girl who looks who just looked, like you. Yeah, and she's and, like, oh, you date and my clone. Two ghosts, same, same lips red, same eyes blue, yeah. same white shirt, couple more tattoos, but it's not you and it's not. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so good. That's why that one, Harry Styles, like his first album is my favorite ever. Like the songs on that, yes. I personally don't compare to like any of the other ones. Like, they are just so good. deep and emotional. Like I, I feel think like, it's because it's before he, well, I mean, obviously he was in One Direction and stuff, but like yeah. the Harry Styles now and the Harry Styles of that first album are so different. And I think that's why he yeah. was able to be like that type of writer. Oh, so good. They are in that, but the two ghosts thing yeah eats me alive because even just the the concept of that song is like two people who aren't the same anymore and kind of going back to a relationship that you may be like you're either still in this relationship and you're kind of realizing that you've grown apart or i also look at it as like you're kind of looking back onto a relationship and kind of thinking about it but then realizing that you guys are two completely separate people yeah because the fact too that he notes the same like the same white shirt and then in style she's talking about yeah like white the white t-shirt. shirt and then in what which vault track is it where she's like uh you grew your hair long and got new icons and the fact that the two ghosts he's like same white shirt couple more tattoos and he's talking about mm-hmm. just all of it being <laughs> so in i think that's a now we don't talk now that we don't talk or something yeah. she's like i'm like whatever she says that is but crazy yeah. there's no way that two ghosts is not even a little bit about her like i that feel also like maybe why she didn't put out these vaults too because not just for like their his following but also because they they're so much about him like they're very much yeah. about harry styles like yes. she put out obviously style and out of the woods that like give to harry styles but these ones are like very blatantly about him yeah that putting them out could have been a little bit too on the nose yeah and you're having like, them now i love it <laughs> yeah and it's like you got i don't know it's just so good all of the things that have came from the 1989 really re-release re-recordings yeah. has been nothing but great things so far this is my I favorite feel. re-release it's really Same. completely grown on me i um rep is just that's what i was job. about to say when do you think if you had any guess when do you think rep it, it's hard to listen to these theories <laughs> but i'm very gullible so like everyone's saying what like january they think it's coming out or something i saw i saw that um november that people were theorizing that she was going to announce it oh okay on, in november um i um, would i don't know i don't know i don't know what she's gonna do with rep because i feel like that's such like a different one to announce it, and like a uh, crazy like theme of the album so i don't know what she's, she's gonna do something so, different with it i think she's gonna do something big to announce me too TV. i think that she's going to do something huge but can we talk about for a second how iconic it is that she's with travis kelsey and endgame taylor's version is going to come out like <laughs> just that song <laughs> within itself I think i her re-recording rep while she's with travis just like what those songs are about and her in that time of rep and her now re-recording those is crazy i mean she's probably already re-recorded like if she's get, planning to put yeah. this out soon but still like the era she's in now while re-recording rep is kind of iconic that's what i mean and I'm like excited. can you imagine the edits of endgame oh, specifically i'm so excited with the it's huge it's I know. huge and i i will say that reputation has grown on me i still don't think it's in like my top whatever favorites but it's definitely grown on me where i do listen to reputation quite a bit but it's reputation still, I'm not my gym it like you are my gym album is reputation <laughs> yeah i feel like that's the only like upbeat type of i like, don't know i love rap i think it's just the vibes of rep the, the 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 energy of rep i don't know it's, it's one of my top and i'm very excited yes and then you have debut which i'm just <laughs> debut's gonna be crazy because obviously like <laughs> just her voice in general has changed so much and hearing her sing her first songs now for an album obviously they're gonna sound different but like i think it's gonna sound like so I cool that she's gonna, it's gonna do that it's good that she'll i th- i think that she should do that one last though because it's almost fitting kind of like a full circle moment that, that was her first album and that'll be her last kind of like yeah grab I think it's like, like yeah especially doing it after reputation is like yeah a crazy Which it's also poetic almost that when she made reputation her reputation as she says my reputation's never been worse but now her reputation has literally never been better so yeah. it's crazy that that's where the world's so happy for her with her <laughs> yeah i'm so happy that she came back from that yeah because i wouldn't have i'll tell you that listen me neither <laughs> She's a strong woman. From the random mind of destiny this week, I was <laughs> watching one of Sophie's vlogs, which is Rachel Catherine. It's one of her friends. I watched. Oh, they're vlog. so cute. I want to be part of their they, book club. No, I do because why is it so adorable? Their book let club. Let me in. <laughs> no, let, let us in. Let us fly to Australia. Let me um 
like put Sarah in a backpack unconscious and fly her to Australia <laughs> once a month because that's the only way we'd be able to do it. <laughs> um, so I was watching her video with them. They were trying holiday drinks. And then as a part of it, they just started kind of like talking about, I think that they were like talking about the names of random things. I kind of didn't catch on with what they were doing. But basically... <laughs> It's, I was like, let's think of like inanimate objects that we think could be used as like a kid's name. Yeah. So, li- <laughs> so like, that's what we're going to do. Things that aren't people's like names. Yeah. But like we think should be or could be. I, yeah. Okay. Th- yeah. I have a few, like more than I thought, like my, as my days was going on, like I was thinking of like, or like looking at things. I was like, eh, kind of works. Yeah. So I, have, I have a few. My first one is ballet. <laughs> I thought about that. I literally I thought about cute. ballet. I think it's cute. But like. Now I when think I, it is cute. Like if you like if it was a girl, like a little girl, her name's Ballet. I think that she would be so cute. I think she would have like cute little little bows in her hair. Yeah, and she'd be so cute. That is that I I literally thought about that because I was like that is a cute name. Yeah. Hi Belle. Hi Ballet. Hi Belle. Yeah, it's giving it's giving girly and cute. And yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me get my list. I do know that one of them. I was walking through Target, um, and I thought of Rose. <laughs> <gasps> that's actually cute it's like rose but like make it no a that's fancy. what i mean that's what i mean rose yeah. could you I imagine think that's cute <laughs> yeah or like if it's like a middle name you have like maria rose <laughs> no because it seems it's giving old money <laughs> yeah i like it i think it's like yeah. you're putting a little flair on rose yeah i think that's cute <laughs> my next one it's actually these sound like so silly now reading them like they don't whatever oh yeah the next no. one is elevator but like having a nickname of l okay like, give her a nickname like hi elevator hey l <laughs> hi ellie <laughs> like we don't think of an actual elevator but like just the name <laughs> like <laughs> when you said hi elevator like <laughs> naming your freaking kid elevator like not even like because you gotta think like when they're sitting in class the teacher's not calling them l they're gonna be like elevator are you here yeah but i think if you don't know what an <laughs> elevator is like if that wasn't a thing no yeah take just, away the I elevators aren't work. elevatoring yeah yeah okay <laughs> okay mine is kind of it's not it just kind of has the same ending as rose okay but we have croquet you oh know, i like love the, that the game of croquet yeah that's a boy. giving what oh a boy oh i was thinking yeah. girl I, I, unisex thinking, it's unisex okay so I croquet like that. could be that's for also kind of giving old money it is that's maybe i just have a thing for that yeah i was like yeah this is giving old money <laughs> <laughs> so silly this is so funny my next one uh, okay <laughs> it <laughs> okay the next one is is fang like a vampire fang okay but what i was thinking is like you know how there's like kids or like boys called like jagger like fang like he's in a band and his name is fang he's giving i'm in a band but i'm also undercover mafia and i also run an undercover boxing ring at night yeah and his name is fang yeah his name's fang okay (laughs) that's awesome um this one completely out out of the woods if you will we have candle oh i kind of like that hey candle hey candy <laughs> hey candle. candy i like giving them nicknames because it's like they have like a inanimate, yeah. like real first name but then you give them a nickname and it's actually yeah cute. and you're like that's i like candle know, that, that's going on yeah um okay my next one is latte that's that's a sleigh i think that's cute right someone out there hey, is latte. Named latte right i think that one you can actually see someone being named latte. yeah like, i don't hey. think that they should I, I don't really think that they should but i do think that somebody out there is named latte i think it's cute i do think it's cute it's giving um classy yeah in a weird way i agree yeah same um uh the next one i have is vanity <gasps> i like that that like that one just reminds me of like an older woman though like vanity it is giving it's like giving margie energy yeah. where it's like you know i can't imagine a 20 year old named margie yeah, but no. i can imagine a 60 year old named margie yes. um vanity she's giving one of the golden girls for sure mm-hmm. but still yeah i like that one yeah same i like that i could picture these people okay um <laughs> my next one is actually wait okay i skipped one okay glass <laughs> why did i literally think about this because I, I thought know. of cup i thought of cup too and i was like i don't really like cup but like glass i feel like it's more of like a classier way to say cup yeah like, hey glass. glass 
I don't know. I feel like that's 100% somebody's nickname. Like a weird, quirky nickname that somebody has. They're like, hey, Glass. Yeah. Hey. I, I could imagine that being a name. Um, My next one is Blush. <gasps> I like that one, too. I could imagine. I could imagine somebody being named Blush. That yep. one gives the same energy as like valet, like blush. Yes, yes, yes. Or like if you named I, one like yeah. Bo, but like not B A B E A U, but like B O W. Like yeah, no, that one didn't. That no, one didn't but that's so weird to me because <laughs> it's like there are people named Bo, mm-hmm. but thinking that their name is spelled B O W, it does something different to you. Yeah. I don't know why you don't think of it when you are listening. To, I don't know, but, but the. Bo with a W would be like the girl version of like Bo. Yes, a Bo. If like like Bo from Hopeless, like yeah, the girl version would be B O W. Yeah, like Bo. Okay, Bo. Yeah. Okay, I have memory. Okay, it's giving like Emery? it's either giving like Emery, <laughs> yeah. Mallory, kind of yeah. that vibe hey, of the name. Hey, hey, I Mims. think it's you. Hey, Mims. I have hibiscus, like the plant. <gasps> Okay. That one I feel like yeah. people probably are named hibiscus. I don't know why. Like, imagine somebody's named Claw Clip. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. Imagine if your name was Socket. <laughs> that one kind of sounds like... What's that word? Just kidding. I don't really know the word right now. I'm trying to think of what it is. But like, think of how... When you name your kid, please think of how they could potentially be bullied with that <laughs> name. At one point, I think somebody said that my name should be DJ because my name is Des- Destiny Joe. That's one of my middle names is Destiny Joe. Sorry. One of my middle names is Joe. My name is Destiny. One of my middle names is Joe. So <laughs> Thank like, you, you for clarifying. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Because my I name was is like, Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm saying that because I was saying like my middle names are Destiny Joe and I was like no my first name is Destiny my, one of my middle names is Joe keep along with me guys anyway somebody had been like you guys can call her DJ and my dad was like I will not be ca- having you call that. my daughter DJ but my dad was like imagine what people could spin that and do with her name being like DJ yeah you can kind of get a little whatever very easily yeah like, with my name being Destiny the worst of it was people would call me Des Tony which my name was longer like Sarah, there's like no cute nicknames you can give me. There's like nothing you can really do with it. My name, originally my dad really wanted my name to be Topanga. And I have lived with the... <laughs> no way. Yes. he Because my parents loved Boy Meets World. And my dad was like, Topanga is such a unique <laughs> and beautiful name. And I'm going to be honest, I love it. Mine was associated with Alexandra or... Oh, I can imagine that. My mom also liked boy names for girls. I forgot which one she wanted to do. Not my dad. I think my brother. Someone named me Sarah, but like they were going to change it. But then my brother like kept saying Sarah. So like Sarah. But they took off the H. Aww. I feel like we both have pretty common names. Like I feel like both Destiny and Sarah is like a yeah. fairly common name. Do, but do you want to know something? Mm-hmm. Why do I not read it a lot in books? Why do I not see the name? I was just going to say, every time I see my name, I get shook. But I never always, see my name. My name is always in a book as like, a random character mentioned or yes. like it's always just like oh sarah's here what is we have common names i roll i wish i was <laughs> named socket or candle so i want to be ballet oh i want to be croquet uh. <laughs> you know what guys comment down below some ana- inanimate objects or just whatever that you think that you could name your kid i'm gonna yeah. name my kid ipad <laughs> you just came crazy with that one i'm gonna name mine toast okay you're looking at your jelly cat. I know that's what you <laughs> yeah. just did. You just looked at your jelly cat and you went, I'm going to name it Toast. Oh, God. Thanks, Thank- guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, as always, for watching or listening or whatever you're doing at home for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, you guys know that I keep telling you guys to leave a five-star review if you listen aud- audibly. And if you want to go over to the YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all of that. And yes. we shall see you Thank next you guys. Thursday. See y'all. Love you. See ya.